Thank you for watching. This is Michael W. Ford. Today I'm going to discuss and present some different ways uh, one can have their own altar. Um, what an altar uh, in its most minimal state can be to its most uh, uh, more advanced state. It's up to the individual who is new to magic or Luciferianism to understand what they want to do for an altar. Let's understand that the altar for a Luciferian or left-hand path practitioner, generally in ceremonial magic, it represents the basis or the center of the great work. And the great work is your initiation, your workings of magic from sorcery to ceremonial invocation to meditation to uh, uh, workings around the triad of the morning star liberation, illumination, apotheosis. Um, the altar represents the fixed will and the focus of the Luciferian. So what that means is there's no power within the altar, only as a tool to illuminate and inspire and ignite your imagination and your focus, your will uh, towards the practice of magic. Your altars can be something as small as a, uh, uh, something you carry around to a, a specific room that you have designated for the practice of magic to something that is in a small corner. It's up to you on what you need. Not all Luciferians require an altar. Um, those who don't will understand the focus of internalization and um, the uh, concept of focusing will. Uh, for those who are practitioners or seeking actual uh, uh, invocation and the arts of uh, ceremonial ritual magic, then the altar uh, has to be understood as simply a, a tool and a focus point to which uh, you are uh, working in your demonic, um, in your aims of attaining the demonic true will or the holy guardian angels, Crowley called it. So let's start by showing what are some things uh, in terms of an altar. Now, the first thing prior to any type of altar is um, the magic circle, the circle for which the Luciferian or black magician will use as a center point, a focus of his or her energy. And this design is from uh, the Watcher's work in Fallen Angels, uh, Watchers and the Witch's Sabbath. And if you see, starting in the very uh, top in the north, uh, Semiaza, Arakabia, Ramil, Serial, Kokabil, Semispil, all of the Watchers, the, the Decadarks, are named around. Now, these Watchers are the fallen angels from Enoch and other traditions that uh, brought wisdom and insight and power to humanity in, in the myth of Enoch 1. Now these watchers led by Shemiaza, which is a, uh, a variant or uh, root spelling for also Azazel. They were split, but have different attributes that are similar. Anyway, these watchers are both creative and destructive. They're inspiring. They uh, can be patron uh, energies. So each one has a sp uh, specific role that it uh, energy it represents. So in a circle like this, this is made on a tapestry that we have printed at the Luciferian Apotheca. In the center is traditionally, it has Azazel, traditionally the evocation or summoning a spirit. Well, you will invoke the spirit by being within the center of this that type of energy will find harmony and, and uh, that motivating challenge within you. That energy will then be shaped and commanded by you. Um, this process is laid out in Apotheosis, Bible the Adversary, 
Go Wish of Shadows, and of course, Fallen Angels. Now, this tapestry can be laid down, and if you have a large enough area, you can meditate within it and practice your workings, um, perhaps even in front of your altar, which is ideal. And uh, when you are done, you can pick this up, fold it up, and put it in a drawer or a box, and uh, it can travel as well. We have a couple different sizes. But this particular uh, circle of the Decadarks is a uh, highly inspiring, um, a truly a Luciferian uh, a tool, a decoration of inspiration and focus of energy. going to start an altar itself can be something as simple as something you take with you, an altar cloth, mela beads, um, two small um, small statues or a pendant or a talisman. Really the key is that in moments when you take this out, it's you within yourself, within your mind, body, and spirit, and that passion of invocation, throwing yourself into invocation or meditation, no matter if you're loud or uh, uttering under your breath, as long as you have that rhythm in place, which brings you into a, a state of Gnosis, uh, that's a, a perfect type of altar. It can be as small as you want or as elaborate. Here's an example of a pretty small traveling one, uh, such as what I use when I go into different, uh, go traveling or such. As you can see here, this is a very simple Lucifer uh, altar cloth with a sigil. Um, here we have the Melas, and these are ideal for meditation, Aramanic yoga, uh, really focusing your mind and your energy. Something that's highly important in uh, early and ongoing initiation. And then we have two small uh, statues, a Lilith and a Pazuzu. And these are just an example. So this would be the most simple. You bring it out wherever you are for when you need to use it. You use it and then you pack it back up. It takes uh, literally no time um, your invocations will be your offerings in that sense. Um, and you have to be very comfortable with uh, trusting your intuition and your instincts in this type of uh, workings. These type of workings often in an isolated way or an individual way will find fruition in experiences you have uh, tied into your invocations and your workings. Uh, so you will see um, and validate even methods as simple as this, uh, which could easily be uh, brushed away by um, someone else, can have significant power and energy and meaning by your uh, success in uh, the unity of will, desire, belief in your moments of Gnosis. And finally, I'm going to show you a more elaborate type of altar. Now, this is still a very simple altar. I set this up in five minutes, um, and it's something that can be put in a corner of a room um, up against a wall or such. Um, and here it is. Now, this is a very um, basic for someone who's going to practice uh, ritual invocation. Now I use the statue and you can switch out as many as you want or have different ones depending on the season or type of working you're doing. This is an old Baphomet, Sabbatic Goat uh, statue and um, uh, we have the candle holder, we have the chalice incense holder, we have the wand, uh, we have the Athame or Athame um, 
we have the bell for uh, opening and closing rights and the libation bowl. This cloth is just one example that we we have and most of these items are at the Luciferian Apotheca. But as you can see, altars can be their uh, representations of your will, your focus. And that is the essence of what these are, are used for. And an interesting side note, this Baphomet Sabbatic Goat statue I've had since I believe the late 90s. It's been through a lot. And uh, this was one of the few available in the early days. And once the Luciferian Apotheca opened, and my work expanded and grew in popularity, we were able to have new Baphomet designs reproduced in partnering with other manufacturers. And now Baphomet is everywhere, but that's an interesting one. I, I still like that one, even though he has the broken horn, but a lot of magical workings with that one in particular. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you for tuning in. Sorry it took so long to put out one since I have a lot of works uh, in process right now. Um, remember, visit the Luciferian Apotheca. We have uh, tools, magical supplies. We have clothing, all types of things from the most serious to not so serious. Uh, all things left-hand path. My works Hecate and the Black Arts is uh, available in hardcover, softcover, and deluxe edition through Manus Sinistra, and many other works, including Octaya Ritual, Dark Ambient Ritual Music in the works. Thank you, like, subscribe, and...